If there's one game series that has missed the remaster boat this generation, it's Metal Gear Solid. Sure, we had the excellent HD collection rounding up Metal Gear Solid 2, 3 and Peace Walker in one package. The collection was expertly handled by Bluepoint Games in 2011, updating the visuals to a native 720p with improved HUDs on PS3 and Xbox 360. But since then, there's been little sign of a proper current gen release. Developer Bluepoint is tackling new projects, and Kojima has long since departed from Konami, meaning that since Metal Gear Survive, there's been little word on the future of the series. Last week, we got the next best thing though. That HD collection for Xbox 360 is now available on Xbox One through back compat support, and it might just be the best way to play these games to date. Okay, some caveats here. Don't expect any res boosts or dramatic differences in visual quality. A proper 1920x1080 rendition of these games would have been amazing, but there's nothing forthcoming. In reality, on a regular Xbox One, the setup is as Bluepoint left it for the HD collection. A native 1280x720 with 2x multi-sample anti-aliasing to clean up the jagged edges. It still looks reasonable using that, a match for the original 360 version image quality wise. But the sore point is, Xbox One X support is completely non-existent. Once again, a back and pack title hits the marketplace, a high profile title, but there's zero time investment in X hardware to make use of its extra horsepower. The potential to see this game running at a higher res is completely missed, and that's a huge shame. X would have taken the game's original native res and multiplied it by 9 times, a full 3840x2160 in this case. What you also get potentially by playing MGS2 and 3 on X is slight performance boosts where even a regular Xbox One drops frames. More on that later, but in terms of core visual features, these titles still expectedly use PS2 grade assets. There's at least one refinement on Xbox One X that gives it an edge over the regular model and 360 in texture filtering. 16x anisotropic filtering is forced on X hardware by default, which cleans up blurry stretches on MGS2's connecting bridges. Yes, it's a welcome upgrade. Sadly, it's really the only visual change you can expect from a vastly more powerful machine. And so much GPU power is being left untapped. It's a strange trend we've seen as of late, and X enhancements are slowing down in frequency, especially with back and pack releases. It started off with a bang, with the likes of Oblivion and Fallout 3 updated to run with a huge markup in visual quality. Sure, the textures arguably don't hold up to that level of scrutiny, at 1800p or 4K, but it cemented them as the best ways to play on console. At a native 4K, this could have been the de facto console experience. Instead, barring the texture filtering, you're just as well off using base Xbox One hardware to play them. Let's get theoretical for a moment. What if the game did run at 4K on X, and how much better would it have looked? To test that, I'm running the PS2 version of MGS3, a game which never got a PC release, through the PCSX2 emulator. I've bumped the resolution up to 3840 by 2160 which is downsampling to 1080p here, with 16x anisotropic filtering force 2. It's the most crisp the game's ever looked. Now the frame rate struggles a bit, even on a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X with a Titan, and there are a few glitches, but as a proof of concept, this shows what we missed on Xbox One X next to it. Microsoft's virtualization of the 360 is far more accurate than this emulator. It's hard to recommend playing either MGS2 or 3 with all these drops and glitches, even with the prospect of 4K. I'd take the near locked 60fps performance on X via back and pat any day by comparison, but it's still interesting to see. In that sense, Xbox One and Xbox One X still give the best version of MGS3 possible today, just not by the margin you'd hope for. As for MGS2, an official PC release came out after the PS2 version, but it does miss the refinements Bluepoint added to the HD collection. Overall, playing it on Xbox One or X is still the definitive way to play it. Next, there's the issue of performance. This one's fairly straightforward, but first, let's cast our minds back to the original PS2 version. MGS3 is an interesting case study, as one of the most ambitious games on the system. After targeting 60fps in MGS2, this sequel attempted to create larger, more complex jungle environments, with the sacrifice being a drop to a 30fps target. So when it came to the HD collection, MGS3 was the main beneficiary of a performance upgrade, 
right up to a never before seen 60 FPS. The game got a sizable upgrade in frame rate on PS3 and Xbox 360 in this sense, using cutscenes as an example, where a double buffer VSync is used instead of the adaptive VSync on PS2. The last gen consoles got a much tighter 60 FPS lock. It's not perfect, and some effects drop it down, more so on PS3, but it was certainly good enough and much better in gameplay. So where are we seven years later? Taking that 360 version of the HD remaster, the best at the time, many of these drops remain in MGS3. The real success of the back and pat then is that performance moves to a higher rung of stability, mostly a locked 60 FPS between the two Xbox One machines on the right. This pretty much cements it as the definitive way to play the game right now. It's an upgrade on something that was already impressive at the time. Perhaps the bigger advantage is in gameplay. Now if you'll recall, the subsistence version of MGS3, which the HD collection uses, lets you unlock the camera to freely view the area ahead. It's something that was expanded on in Peace Walker and MGS4's controls and meant you didn't have to stop in your tracks to constantly look around. The trouble with this, well MGS3 was designed with that signature top-down view in mind. When it came to optimizing PS2 code, gameplay ran much smoother with this limited fixed bird's eye view, in which Konami could concentrate on visual quality. Introducing a free view in subsistence broke this. On PS2, it was something you accepted though, for the freedom you earned in return. It also worked much better for MGS3, in the absence of a traditional radar in the top right. You simply have to rely on your sensors more than MGS1 and 2. With this camera mode, the drawback in performance extended even to the 360 version. In gameplay, it still dropped the 50 FPS line while walking over this bridge for example. All that's fixed with the move to Xbox One and X, and for MGS3, it's hard to see much of an advantage between either of these new consoles. Compared to 360 though, you're getting the smoothest experience playing this one through back and pat. But what about MGS2? Well fortunately, this one was already built with 60 FPS in mind back in the day, so it's a lesser challenge overall. Plus, there's no option to use that free camera here, even in the Substance re-release, so PS2 was never taxed to the same extent. So it goes for the HD collection on 360 and PS3, and again on Xbox One and X. It simply runs at 60 FPS fluidly in most gameplay. The opening tanker area with Snake is arguably the biggest stress test you'll find in the game, with lots of geometry and rain effects. All three Xbox machines seem to handle it with no issues at all though. Cutscenes in MGS2 are a different story. Whether it's the hangar or later oil rig sections with Raiden, anything showing the entire playable area will hammer performance on 360. That's mostly cleared up with the back and pat releases of course. The one spot where this surprisingly isn't the case, and even X struggles, is on long views with the plantation in cutscenes. Especially in the shot with Fortune, you're looking at a harsh drop to 35 FPS on 360, bumped up to 48 FPS on the newer Xbox models. It's unusual to see no actual increase with X hardware, since this does seem like a more GPU intensive scene. In the main though, this game will run at 60 FPS more solidly than any other console version, and you do get the residual benefit of 16 times AF on X at least, if little else. So that's the lowdown. It's a bit of a disappointment MGS2 and 3 aren't getting the classic treatment they deserve. But if you want the best way to play both, Xbox One is the machine to own. Looking back to the PS2 era, the work Kojima and his team put into these two were absolutely ahead of their time. The 3D environments, motion captured cutscenes and voice acting were proudly put on display. It was cutting edge and truly shaped the way narrative driven games are made today. It's a shame the options on Sony's consoles are slim, short of setting up your PS3 again to play the HD collection. But no such problem on the opposite side of the fence. Missed opportunity or not for X owners, Microsoft has the bases covered for revisiting a fascinating chapter in games history. That's all from me today though. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like or subscribe to our channel. And also ring the bell here to get notifications as soon as a video lands. To get the source file to this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. And for direct contact with me or the team, just use Twitter. But until next time, thanks for watching.